Jesus, he proclaimed to the world, I am the light of the world. As the light of the world, Jesus, he revealed the truth to the world. And I want you to understand that he did not reveal an object of truth. He did not reveal a subject of truth. Jesus, he revealed the divine truth that all have sinned, all have lived in disobedience and that we must turn away from living in disobedience. We must follow him. We must accept him. We must believe in him. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in the message that he shared? Do you believe in, in his truth? That comes to the forefront of our Sunday school lesson here for, for this week. And as again, we continue to move ahead here in the month of March. Do you believe in him? Jesus, he is a major stumbling block for, for many who cannot believe in him. They cannot believe in him. They say, if I was there, many say today, if I was there to, to see the miracles, if I was there to see Jesus, if I was there to, to hear him teach, then I would believe. But what we find in scripture, especially here in our Sunday school lesson this week, is that there were many who was there to see Jesus. They was there to hear him. They was there to, to witness the miracles, yet they doubted Jesus. They did not believe in him. They could not accept Christ for who he said that he was. That is what we see here in our Sunday school lesson here today. Where there in the 31st verse, our lesson, it opens up with Jesus saying to the Jews that did believe him. He said, if you abide in my word, Jesus said, you are my disciples. That is, you are my followers. Jesus said, indeed, he said there as he continued in the 32nd verse there, he said, you shall know the truth. And again, this truth is not a subjective. It's not opinion based. It is not a objective truth based on research. It is based on Jesus's word, the divine truth, the word that he received from his father and then delivered to us, delivered to the world. He said, you shall know it. You shall know the truth. And he said, the truth, it shall make you free. Now, the question that arises from that statement of Christ is, well, what, what is one being set free from, right? What, what, what are you saying that you're setting me free from? Because many will hear Jesus say that to them today and they will say, well, I'm not bound to anything. I'm not captured. I'm not a slave to anything. So what exactly are you setting me free from? Now, when we take a look there at the 33rd verse, we'll see that the Jews essentially asked Jesus that question. That was the question that the Jews asked. They say that in that 33rd verse, they say, we are Abraham's descendants. The Jews, they said to, to Jesus, we have never been in bondage. Now, I want you to understand that the mindset that the Jews were speaking from, it was not a, a spiritual mindset. They were looking around and they were saying, well, we, we aren't slaves to anyone. I'm not in prison. I'm not in jail. What do I need to be set free from? They were listening to what Jesus was saying they were listening to it with a worldly mindset to where they were thinking of things as they could see them, but they were not thinking of things spiritually. We'll see there. Now, the irony about that statement, of course, is that Abraham's descendants, they were uh, in bondage at one point in time in Egypt. And then even after Egypt, when they left Egypt, there were many times where, where Abraham's descendants throughout the book of Judges, we, we have seen in recent Sunday school lessons, where we found that the, the Jews, the children of Israel, where they lived in oppression. And even in, in that day, the day of Jesus, it wasn't like the, the Jews were living up under their own authority. They were living up under the authority of Rome at that point in time. But again, they say, hey, we, we, we feel like we are free they said to Jesus, we aren't, we aren't a slave to anyone. We are not uh, imprisoned. So what is, what is it that you can set us free from? They say there again, as we take a look at the ending of that 33rd verse, they said to Jesus, how can you say we will be made free? So again, the problem here was that their mind, again, they weren't really listening to Jesus. They couldn't understand Jesus. And the reason why they could not understand Jesus was because they were thinking worldly, whereas Jesus, he was speaking spiritually. Now we see there in the 34th verse that Jesus was indeed speaking spiritually because he said there in the 34th verse, he said, 
whoever commits sin, that is, you know, talking again about the spirit, he said, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. So for anyone that that was asking about, well, what is it that, that Jesus can set me free from? We see there that Jesus was talking about sin and setting one free from being a slave to sin. Are you a slave? Are you a slave of sin today? I'll be interested in, in how people will answer that question because I think that there are a lot of people like these Jews that we see here in our Sunday school lesson today, they don't realize that they are a slave to sin. There are many people today who are ignorant of the fact that they are a slave of sin. But Jesus, again, being the light of the world and revealing the truth to us, Jesus was saying to them that they were living in sin. And there are many people today that live in sin. Sin, I want you to understand, is disobedience of God. It's disobedience to his instructions. When you choose not to obey his instructions, you are living disobediently. You are living in sin. And again, there are many people who are ignorant of the fact that they live disobediently. But then again, at the same time, there are many that know of God's instructions that blatantly choose to disregard his instructions. They choose to willfully live in sin. Now we'll see there in the 35th verse, we'll see that Jesus, he expresses God's desire towards us, right? That the Lord wishes for us to become his children, that we become his child so that we can abide in his house forever, Jesus says there. And so there again, that is the will of God. The will of God is that, that we, he created us so that he could dwell with us for eternity, for everlasting life. And, and even though man fell short in, in, in the garden by, by disobeying the Lord, the Lord, he still has that same desire towards us to where he desires that we be with him for everlasting life. The Lord does not want to lose anybody to sin. That is why he gave us his only begotten son, so that Jesus could do exactly what we see him doing here in this scripture, in our lesson here today, where again, he announced to the world, you live in sin, but believe in me. And if you believe in me, you will not perish. You will have everlasting life. But again, that's what the gospel does again. It forces us to make the choice. Will we believe in, in, in this statement? Will we believe in, in accepting what Jesus said is God's desire or will we not believe in it? Will we doubt Christ? I would hope that you would believe in him and I would hope that you would walk in the light so that you don't stumble in, in darkness, darkness being sin. Now we'll see there in the 37 verse there that this truth, again, it is difficult for many to accept. They don't think anything is wrong with, with how they live. We'll see there in the 37 verse that Jesus, he points this out to the Jews as he spoke about how they sought to kill him. Yet they were supposed to be Abraham's descendants. That is, that is what they said there. But again, when you think about Abraham, when I think about Abraham, I think about someone who was of true, sincere faith. When the Lord told Abraham to leave his home and to go to a foreign land, a land which turned out to be the land of Canaan, again, the land that was promised to Abraham's descendants, Abraham, he didn't question. Abraham, he didn't hesitate. Abraham, he did not delay. When the Lord told Abraham to go to that land, Abraham got up. He took those who was his and, and he moved. He went. Abraham was a man that moved in faith. And if these Jews who are saying that they are Abraham's descendants there, if they really were his descendants, if they really were of the same spirit as Abraham, they wouldn't have doubted. They wouldn't have questioned Jesus. Yeah, it reminds me of, of the children of Israel with Moses, as I have looked at recently in a sermon to where again, they, unlike Abraham, they doubted Moses and the Lord every step of the way to the promised land to the point that they refused to enter into the promised land. That is not walking by faith. That is being hesitant. That is being doubtful of the Lord. That is unbelief. And as I have shared in, in my sermon series that I'm still preaching, 
you cannot walk, you cannot follow Christ and have a heart of unbelief. You must trust in the Lord. Now, why did, why did these Jews, why did they doubt Jesus? Why did they doubt the truth, the word that he was sharing with them? We'll see there in the 37th verse that Jesus, he gives an answer to that question. He gives an answer to the question as to why many people still doubt the Lord to this day. He says that in the 37th verse, that the reason was because the divine truth, Jesus's word, it had no place in them. And then there in the 38th verse, he said the reason why the truth had no place in them was because they believed in the manner of their father. Now, who was their father? They said that their father was Abraham. But in scripture that is not covered in our Sunday school lesson, but it's in this same chapter. If you take a look at the 44th verse there, you'll see that, that Jesus, he said to them, you are of your father, the devil, and the desire of of your father, you want to do the devil. He does not stand in the truth. Jesus says there because there is no truth in him. He speaks the devil. He speaks from his own resources for he is a liar. And Jesus said there, he is the father of it. The Jews that Jesus was speaking to there, they live by lies. They could not accept the truth. Jesus said there, Jesus, he was dealing with the a set of Jews here who live contrary to his word and their hearts were set in it. And so because their hearts were set in living contrary to his word, the word of God, they could not believe in it. They could not accept it. That is why they were so doubtful. That is why they had a, a heart that was of unbelief. Now, as we continue on there, as our lesson the scripture for our lesson now skips all the way down to the 48th verse. We'll see that because the Jews could not be persuaded there, we'll see that they said to Jesus there in that 48th verse, do we not say rightly? Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan, that you have a demon, they say there to Jesus? So these people, they had their own conspiracies about Jesus, conspiracies that they had that they have bought into conspiracies that I believe was being parroted by, by the religious leaders who despise Jesus. But again, look at the claim there. Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan? That shows just how much the Jews, these Jews anyway, how they despise Jesus because the Jews and the Samaritans, they had a history. The Jews and the Samaritans, they did not get along. I'm not going to dive into the reason as to, to why they did not get along but they did not get along. The Jews, they despised the Samaritans. As you can see, when Jesus went to the well and the Samaritan woman uh, gave him some water from the well. We'll see there in that verse as well with them calling Jesus a demon. It shows us how ignorant the conspiracy is, how ignorant these Jews were of, of Jesus, how ignorant they were of the Lord, how ignorant they were of the word, how ignorant they were of the spirit as well. They were not able to discern who Jesus was, which it should have been easy for them to discern who Jesus was. Take a look, as Jesus said, when he spoke about the fourfold witness that he had, take a look at his works. What was it about his works that would suggest that Jesus was a demon? He healed the sick. He called the lame to be able to walk again, right? Again, he was making those who were blind to be able to see. And then when he was going out and preaching and teaching, what was the message that he was sharing? Love the Lord, love your neighbor as you love yourself, turn away from sin, and again, walk in the truth. What about that sounds like Jesus was a demon? So they were again buying into conspiracies, conspiracies that was built up on not any truth, but conspiracies that was built up on lies. Something that I have to warn about and something that I've always warned about, especially in recent years, is that you have to be careful who you listen to. You absolutely have to be careful who you listen to today because there are so many lies being spread in the world today that people 
who like to say that they are Christians. They like to say that they are a child of God, that they buy into. Why is it that they buy into it? Again, if we go back up in our lesson here today, Jesus said that those Jews, they could not believe in his word because their father was the father of lies. They were accepting the lies of their father, who was the devil. That was their heart. Their heart was not for the Lord. Again, if you say, if you profess that you are a child of God, but you don't walk by faith, you, you struggle with his truth, I tell you today, it's time for you to do a hard check. You really need to take a look at yourself, okay, and answer whether or not you truly do believe in the Lord, whether or not you truly do believe in Christ. Now, there in the 49th verse, after again hearing, hearing what the Jews were saying here in, in this scripture, we'll see there in the 49th verse that Jesus, he again proclaims exactly who, who he is there. In the 49th verse, Jesus said, I don't have a demon. Jesus said there, I honor my father. There in the 50th verse, Jesus said, I don't seek my own glory. He said, there, there is one who seeks, there is one who judges. There in the 51st verse, and Jesus, he once again shares that the Father's will is for anyone who is obedient to his word, to his will. His will is for them to never see death. Now, this, of course, is not talking about physical death. Jesus, again, he was not talking worldly. Jesus, again, he was talking spiritually there when he said that they will not see death. Again, the gospel, it forces us. It makes us answer the question, will we believe this? Do you believe that you will never see death if you believe in the only begotten son of God? It forces us to answer that question. And many today say, I don't know about that. Many today say, I don't believe that. I can't believe that. But again, you should choose to, to believe. Open up your heart to, to the word of God. If you believe in Christ, again, there is a promise that we see Jesus make to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John's gospel, that you will have everlasting life. But again, in the third chapter of John's gospel, in 18 verse, a verse that is often overlooked, it is also premised that if you choose to reject, if you choose to not believe in Christ, you are condemned already. You will see death. Now there in the 52nd verse, we see again there that the Jews, they showed that they were committed to rejecting Christ they say to Jesus there in that verse, now we know that you have a demon. You see, in their minds, Abraham and the prophets, they, they were greater than, than this Jesus that was standing before, before, before them. We'll see, they say to Jesus there in that 53rd verse, they said to Jesus, they asked him, are you greater than, than Abraham? Are you greater than the prophets? They asked Jesus there. And so they was asking Jesus that question in a manner to making it seem like Jesus was crazy. They was essentially saying, man, are you crazy, man? Are you insane? What is it that you are talking about? And again, there are many people today who think that, that someone like me, they think that I'm crazy. They think that I'm the fool. They think that I am insane for believing in this man who I have never seen, for believing in a God that I have never seen. Now, we'll see there in the 54th verse that Jesus, he pointedly, he said uh, to them in, in answer to their question, he said to them that he sought to honor his father. And he made it very clear there in that verse that his father was the one who they said was their God. There can be absolutely no doubt here, again, when we take a look at that verse there, that Jesus, that he was proclaiming that he was the son of God. Jesus, he left them with no doubt who he was saying that he was. Jesus was saying that he was their Messiah. He was the Messiah, that he was Christ. And again, he is putting the shoe on, on their foot, as the gospel always does. Can you believe it? Do you believe in me? 
Jesus, he then said to them there in the 55th verse, he pointedly said to them, you have not known him. You have not known the Lord. He said that they could say that they knew the Lord, but in actuality, he truly knew God and that he was not a liar like them. See, it's hard to say that you know the Lord when when you aren't able to keep his word, when you aren't obedient to his word, because the Lord doesn't dwell in you. So so how can you know the Lord when you aren't in fellowship with him? And then the fact that they could not even discern the Lord standing before before them, the fact that they could not discern that that God was standing before them doing good works, sharing a good word. How could they say that they knew the Lord and that that Jesus was the one that was lying? So we'll see there in the 56th verse that Jesus, he spoke about how Abraham rejoiced to see the Lord the day that, that God visited him. See, Abraham, in that scripture, he had never seen the Lord. He didn't know what God looked like. He just seen strangers. But he was able to perceive that it was God that was visiting him. He was able to perceive it in his heart. Because again, he had a heart that was for the Lord. He didn't have a heart that was after the devil. And so because he had a heart that was for the Lord, he was able to perceive the Lord standing before him. There in the 57th verse, with one last question there, the Jews, they showed how blind they were with their worldly mindset. They in their minds thought that they were being wiser when they asked Jesus, had he seen Abraham? They thought that they were being wise by asking Jesus that question. And then Jesus, you know, when you try to get sarcastic with the, with the Lord, when you try to think yourself wiser than the Lord, the Lord, as he did with Job, he will bite back. The Lord will show you who is the wiser. And Jesus, he did that in the 58th verse there, where Jesus, he said, before Abraham was, I am. And so again, the message, Jesus, he was making the message. He was making it loud. He was making it very clear to, to these Jews who were doubting him, who were, were having that stubborn heart of unbelief, which I again preached about recently. There are so many today that are unable to believe in, in Christ today because they have a heart after the devil. There are many today who are unable to accept Christ, who are unable to believe in him because their hearts are closed shut. There are many who think that they have a heart that is open because they, they, you know, they search for life elsewhere, right? They, they look for life beyond this world. They, they find it easier to believe that it is life out there somewhere than it is for them to believe in Christ. And while they may think their hearts are open, I would tell them that they need to open up their hearts even more to, to believe in the Lord, to believe in the one who created all things known, all things unknown, who created the things that we can see and the things that are invisible to us. You have to have a heart that is open to believe in the virgin birth. You have to have a heart that is, that is open to believe that Christ was manifested in this world to be our propitiation, to die on the cross for our sins, to make a way for us to everlasting life. You have to have a heart that is open to be able to believe in Christ. So I would encourage all of you today to not be like these Jews who had a heart that was shut. There was no opening it. There was no persuading their hearts. I would encourage all of you today to open up your heart and to seek the truth. That is the divine truth. Seek Christ. And as I preached recently earlier this year, if you ask, it will be given to you. If you seek, you will find. And if you, if you knock on the door, that door, it will open to you. The Lord, he will reveal himself to you. He will reveal that light to you. And I hope that you would walk in that light. I hope that you will believe in him. I hope that you will believe in his only begotten son. Because again, as Jesus said, when you follow him, when you believe in him, there is everlasting life. And I hope that you desire to inherit 
that everlasting life, that life of peace, that life of joy with the Lord. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson, that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday School lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday School lesson, the sermons, the Bible studies, or the Food for Thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.